Welcome to our backyard. This is the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We are two friends having a discussion after everyone else has passed out or gone to bed. Grab a drink and listen as we discuss everything from automation, space exploration, and why the meaning of life is 42. The hills are alive with the sound of two idiots talking. We're going to be talking about music today, history, and how it affects us. We're sitting here in Tejas, the not-frozen wonderland. I'm drinking a Shiner Bach, because when in Rome, Mike, how you doing? What are you drinking? I'm so happy Texas isn't frozen anymore, and I'm joining you with drinking with some Old Forester, some good old bourbon. And Nick, I'm excited about this episode, because it impacts everyone's lives. I don't think anyone has ever in history not been affected by music some form or some shape even deaf people which we'll maybe get into but even they feel the music music is in our bones and nick why don't you start it off with some early history of music so you're right mike most people throughout time have been affected by music music is something that humans find and i think we all kind of knew that it's just kind of interesting to see it out the oldest known instrument was from 60,000 years ago. 60,000? 60, 60,000. Actually, a Neanderthal instrument, not even Homo sapien. Now, in this, the musical instrument, this, this one I'm talking about, was made from the femur of a cave bear, and it has two holes in it, and it was a flute-like instrument. It would have four holes. They recreated one, and they played music out of it. Supposedly, it sounds pretty cool. Now, every single old, quote-unquote, flute kind of instrument that I've found that people have researched, there's a certain percentage of people who think, well, this is just a fragment of something that like a dog chewed or a coyote, wolf, whatever chewed holes in is possible. It's just weird that it makes music also, but not improbable. It's surprising to me that it's flute, like the first kind of instrument, not percussion based, like, um, like some type of drum or something. I'm sure the first instruments were percussion-based, but I don't know how they would have lasted. I think bone lasts a lot longer. Well, I mean... Than like a... Because most drums are leather stretched over wood or something. Yeah, but banging two rocks together, different rocks creates different sounds. And uh, speaking of early music, I know architectural-wise that humans would put rocks in certain wind paths to create certain whistle sounds i mean modern artists even do it today but our ancestors did it for those wondering no the stone hedge has nothing to do with music it has to deal with the sun but there are ancient cultures that made their sculptures to speak in the gods to speak with music but again i'm still surprised it's flute based it seems everything is auditory based wind based not physical and and movement based like percussion that's that's very surprising to me yeah, but if you have two musical rocks that you bang together, we don't know that from 60,000 years ago. We just look, see rocks. Even if they were found in a in a village, we're still not going to be like, I bet I bet there's some sick tunes that came out of those boulders. That's a nice boulder. <laughs> they used to ride these babies for miles. <laughs> but I, I am curious, though, if any cave paintings have any musical, I don't. I didn't research this, and I don't expect you to know this. But if there's any cave paintings of our ancestors or our cousins of the Neanderthals playing instruments, I, from my knowledge, most of it was hunting and family based. But if music's important, because I, I don't think that the bones that are created with the holes were based on wolves and coyotes. I feel like that's that's selling humanity short and our ancestors and our cousins short. Humans have been creative and smart and intelligent and able to survive uncoming and unable to survive ridiculous odds. So it kind of makes sense that we would be able to make music to entertain ourselves, especially if lightweight for nomadic tribes. Now, with music too, it keeps getting more and more advanced. So I don't know if you want to keep going with the history of Nick or we can jump into a little bit more advanced music. Yeah, so I'll just bring it up to speed. Um, so the first sound your melody kind of thing is greece there's two you have oh man i'm gonna mess up this pronunciation i'm sure the cyclos epitaph and the hurian hymn number six are two of the earliest recorded that have lyrics as well as 
musical tone and the uh the epitaph is talking about um life and grieving which probably a pretty common theme in most music and as time goes on music got more personalized which you know today i think the biggest advancement in music besides all the different cultures created their own instruments and every culture has their own music but the radio really spread the spread of music and then furthermore now with like spotify phones people having their own music they can listen to more and more like small artists are popping up so music is becoming a lot more decentralized than it's ever been for the longest time his in history music's pretty much been like whatever the aristocrats listen to and now there's all sorts of music there's not a cultural music i mean if i asked you what do you think is the cultural music of america um well unfortunately wap comes to my mind but i'm not 100 percent sure that that's what i want it to be yeah, but like for the longest, like you get jazz is pretty common as people say the historical. Well, I, w- I would say classic music, which transferred from Europe to America, was pretty Americanized. I would say, like, what uh, Overture 1812 wasn't he uh, American or was he Aust- Austrian? Asking the wrong guy. Okay. Um, but I but, am curious before we get too far yep. away with it with the Greeks. Um, I'm not quite sure on the timeline. I imagine ancient egypt or some ancient asian base probably had music but with the ancient greek was it is it just because we had the written notes yeah so we have the written notes that's it's written down if it didn't if it's not in writing it didn't happen uh, <laughs> if i didn't see it didn't happen perception is my reality like we said the oldest known musical instrument is from sixty thousand years ago so we i'd be say i'd feel comfortable saying every culture had music we just don't know what it is. This is kind of random, but you just made me think of it. But have you ever heard the Aztec death flute, I believe it's called? No, but that sounds pretty cool. It Imagine a, a dying eagle fighting a vulture. And that's the sound that comes to mind when listening to it. Gotcha. Uh, hi- history is really good at making some crazy sounds. And, you know, history is really good at making scary stuff. But I brought it up with classical music, and I think that's a great place to jump into classical music kind of hit on all peaks the classics are still relevant today on a psychology and nervous system based science so granted back when people they were listening to it they were enjoying it dancing it they were loving it you know fly the valkyries beethoven mozart etc etc but there's a whole science behind it which we are implementing and using still today i guess the classical music truly is classic and never dies. I don't know if you came across classical music in your research. Yeah, I did. Um, one of the things that I thought was int- not to, it's more of a story, I guess. So when rock music was coming up, they did all the studies, you know, the Catholic church about how plants would grow better. while listening to classical music than rock music. And it's not, it it's true but it's not because of the music it's just the vibrations that each p- p- musical piece sends off so your classical music sends off vibrations that the plants like more so you're telling me nick blasting loud speakers next to a plant that's physically pushing and vibrating it isn't good for it interesting <laughs> and, and how do you it- bring it back to plants <laughs> you son of a bitch didn't mean to but it happened I'm going to have to figure out how to bring this to space by the end of the podcast. But it is classical music is very interesting because we're implementing it more in schools and we're implementing it more at the workplace. Uh, for those who don't know, the frontal lobe of your brain is activated far more by classical music, which kind of makes me think why our forefathers were so smart for sending the Declaration of Independence how it was. Well, we kind of stopped listening to that. It act, Different types of music activates different parts of your brain and for those wondering all music activates very deep sensory organs in our brain that releases dopamine and serotonin which is why we feel such emotions to it now it also releases another sense it is not a chemical in our brain that 
why sad music makes us feel sad. It's deeply tied into our psychology. Um, our vibrations in our own body tend to sync to what music we are listening to. So when we're sad, we produce certain brain waves. So when we listen to those music with the same waves, we sync up with it better and we connect with it more. If you've ever had music where you get those goosebumps, your hair stands up, you feel it, and you get kind of like, not an adrenaline rush, but some kind of beat, that is the very middle of your brain being activated solely because your music is syncing up with your entire body. And that beat and that system is really good and really bad for us, depending on our mood and depending on what psychological state we're in. But sticking with classical music, because I, I like classical music when I'm doing work, it is nerd. All right, listen here. You can go back to your state and call me a nerd, but you're not going to sit here in my state and tell me I'm a nerd. Oh, I'm a nerd. I Hashtag lie. don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas. Something about being from Texas. <laughs> Yeehaw. <laughs> well, classical music truly makes you be smarter. It, uh, If I'm not mistaken, it's a at least a 15% increase when doing any schoolwork listening to classical music and i believe critical thinking increases i think it was 45 percent if i remember across my study again you can always find our studies on our youtube channel that's where we put our sources and classical music is slowly being more implemented in european southeast asian and finally now american cultures where you know when kids are taking tests they play classical music surprise surprise we're doing better yeah that's a whole different you're, that's an education system podcast that you can find but we're not going to get too far into that but just sticking with music in general we have been fascinated why music makes our bodies move since science has come around our philosophy has come around we have always wondered why music is such deep roots into our bodies and systems and it's just a study that I came across in the 1980s is how to sell. It's capitalism and music mixed together with psychology. So in the 1980s, they were trying to figure out how to people to eat more, drink more, spend more at restaurants. And they found out that if you play slow, relaxing music, people drink more and want eat their food slower. So if they eat their food slower, they order more drinks. If they order more drinks, they drink slower. So the cycle continues. So most restaurants play calm, relaxing music and that benefits them because you end up buying more than you actually would have, which I thought that was really interesting how we're using music to sell things more. I mean, you could always go with jingles, but just background noise, you don't even pick up. And Nick, I don't know if you know about scary movies, about sounds we can't even hear, but still influence us. No, I have no idea. So they play sounds that humans can't hear to control our emotions and to respond to certain things a certain way. Yes, so it's a really big thing in scary uh, movies. There's a certain sound frequency which we auditorily can't hear, but our body can still hear and sense. It, it forces us to be on edge. It forces us to be worried and panic, and that's what they implement in movies, which you can't even tell. That's why certain scenes are a little bit more scarier than you actually think. Or if you play without the sound, it's not even close to being scary. It's Certain audio is tied to certain frequencies in our body, again, matching up our beats, and it produces different things. So relaxing music, you go slower. Scary music that you can't even hear is influenced how scary we are. Do you ever see Bone Tomahawk? I love that movie. Well, except for the right. guy getting split in half with a hawk. It reminds me of that, of like maybe humans long time ago had some kind of like fucked up tool that we could use to tell people like danger was near and that's what that is mimicking but i did i was looking at my notes and i stand corrected the oldest instrument mo probably technically lungs that is well yeah i mean i mean imagine dinosaurs were singing and i mean birds are songbirds for a reason their ancestors are dinosaurs so and so the oldest written song without any musical notes with it mike was written in cuneiform about 3400 or 34 yeah, 3,400 years ago. So that's a long time ago. And it's, for some reason, whales pop in my head, the song of whales. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's so I guess it's not really a human thing. It's well, I want to save that question for later in the podcast. Okay. I have some interesting questions for you. But not only does music affect what you buy, can make you s smarter, 
but it also affects what side of the brain you use. So listening to hard rock or metal music tends to use your back lobe, which makes you, for lack of better words, dumber. Apparently metal music makes you less a critical thinker, which is not surprising and surprising at the same time. Yeah, I listen to rock all the time. I, I can confirm that. <laughs> not rock, metal, I should clarify, or like hard rock, like headbanger, just Swedish death metal kind of stuff, which looking at you, I'm going to say you don't listen to. Yeah, not really. I'll get like kind of there with like the entry level, like I'll listen to like Five Finger Death Punch and Godsmack, but that's about it. Oh, good bands, good bands, good bands. But no, listening to what music... And how you listen to music also affects. So if you play music and produce your own music, you tend to use your left side brain more. And if it's tend to be more faster beat and more melody based, I believe you use your left side brain more. And if you listen to music and it's more, uh, if it's more metronomic, more consistent, you use your right side brain more. It activates different parts depending on what part of music you are. So music is completely dependent on what side of the brain you are. But there is a caveat. So if you play and learn an instrument, you're able to transfer and switch in between your brain, different brain lobes much easier and faster. So you can use both sides of your brains much easier, which I thought was very interesting and why I need now to learn how to play an instrument. Yeah, no, I I definitely know it's really good to learn how to play an instrument for just like everything. Like if you can play an instrument, your like hand-eye coordination is better like your thinking is better that being said i don't really know how to play an instrument but uh we all tried to learn in high school or whatever and in school is kind of taught but i wonder I, I didn't really research this what happens if genetically your family is musically what's the opposite of gifted stunted yeah well doesn't i i, I was gonna ask the question do you play any instruments because i thought you played the guitar um yeah i know how to play like a few chords and can do like a certain thing but i i don't keep it up so i pretty much can only go off memory so you're the same with piano where i simply can't read sheet music i just simply have to memorize which keys are which yeah well even when i in uh in middle school i played the saxophone couldn't read sheet music so i just wrote the chord the wrote the number all right letter. swanson calm down a little bit <laughs> so i wrote the letter above on whatever i had to play i don't know why we don't just do that to start hey if it works it works it's not dumb if it works um so i guess me and nick are coming in this we're not musical based but we we have tried we have tried and it's just amazing how much music is tied into our system so since you brought up the dna i thought it'd be interesting to point this out a fetus in the womb will start developing auditory sensories and organs 17 to 19 weeks in. And as crazy as this sounds, what music you listen to when you're pregnant actually does matter, which is like the ambient sounds, the music you put in your own body actually matters, which I thought was extremely weird because, I mean, still developing cells, not really being able to process it, but simply get through like almost like a electrical wire simply getting current but not understanding where to put the current yeah i i've i didn't look into that but i have heard like throughout my entire life you know i wouldn't like have play beethoven around a pregnant woman like to make your kids smarter which is why my if i have a child when i have a child i will only listen to ted nugent around my pregnant wife is that what your mom did to you? Because that would explain a lot. <laughs> no, I think that was more a white snake. <laughs> and I think that might explain even more. <laughs> that's 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 pretty good. But music is tied into our earliest memories, our psychology. And even when we lose our past on who we are, it can bring us back. So I was coming across this study. I think it was 2006-ish. So... More, uh, more than a decade ago, but they were testing on, it wasn't Alzheimer's, but just degenerate memory loss. This man, who wouldn't maybe say five words in a day when listening to music of his childhood, 
was able to speak in about five minute bursts, completely coherent, completely fluent, and just understand what's going on. But eventually that would fade. So it seems like music's almost like a like a little booster, like a booster shot. Yeah, and this is actually what I looked up because when we decide on this topic, it turns out it's actually a pretty broad topic. Yeah, and we're good at choosing really difficult, very open conversation pieces. And I was like, okay, so to me, music, what am I, what is that? And I have a memory that I never, I didn't think, so when I was fighting fire, we were coming back from a big fire, like the, the day it blew up or something, like it was the middle of the night and I'm driving across and seeing an entire hillside inflamed and Beast of Burden by the Rolling Stones was playing on our list. And I didn't really like think anything of it. And then I heard that song played later, like a few years later. And I was able to remember like everything from that moment. I was able to remember like, obviously the song brought my memory back, but I could see the hillside. I could feel like the temperature in the cab. I could feel the, like the sweat from my yellows, just like very, very vivid memory that I have shit memory. So this is surprising. So I looked up how music impacts memory. And like you said, exactly. We remember better. Like, honestly, I think visual memories are worst. We can't recall it, but we can remember smells. We can remember music a lot better. I don't know why that is, but for some reason, humans really remember stuff when it's related to music. And like you said, I, was, I read a study, it wasn't for people who have Alzheimer's, just memory. And they played music from people's childhoods and they were able to recall all these things that they, were, they couldn't recall earlier. They asked them the same questions, played the music, and then they were able to bring back all these memories. So we do link something to that. And it's not even like, say if you took the words out of the Rolling Stone song and just played the background music, I would still be able to recall that memory. I'm curious because I know humans in a live situation, how their auditory senses work at the five major ones. Eyes are most important. That's what we go off first. I have no idea with memory, but I am curious on the tier list where hearing fits into or different scenarios. Like for memory, is smell the number one? Is hearing the number one? I'm curious on how we store information on did you come across that nick of the tier list no i i'm not really certain i just remembered us talking about smell in some other podcast oh fear it's just something like that but yeah fear brings back memories or smell brings back memories but i think i'm if i had to guess i'd say probably music more so than than smell or maybe it's just you're exposed to more music than like distinct smells might be part of it too yeah i would have to say there's not many new smells i usually get to smell in my life which is a weird thing to think about but nick when you said fear you had like a vietnam flashback which i love now doing this live where i can see and if you want to listen to fear you can check us out at backyard philosophy anywhere you listen to podcasts and on youtube but yeah nick it's amazing how we can sync our memories to music how we can call back how it's almost like a movie scene slash theme where having that background noise defines the moment. And maybe it's just because we're linking multiple senses to the moment. Like you're having not just visionary and touch, but now you're having sound. So you're having three. Are you thinking of a sex joke? No, I'm not. I was thinking of a, like a song that like, if I had to say what song like defined our generation like what song have you played uh, this every single person our age would think of something whether it be something or other smash mouth all-star you are not wrong unfortunately oh god smash mouth to find our generation which is hey it's better than wop yeah all right yeah you got you sold me you sold me i'm on board i'm in i'm in because that song i i hadn't heard in a long time and my wife didn't either wop no, that was all star. And then we heard it and we were like, oh man, like this made me think of this and this made me think of that. It's like, oh yeah, I bet every single one of us, for most of us, Shrek is probably what comes to mind. But 
I think every one of us has a distinctive memory that just saying that song pulls up. Well, it's very interesting for me because I listen to that song every day at work pretty much because we have one single radio and we usually put on like classic 2090s pop because it's just, you know, generic work music. It doesn't offend anyone. And Smash Mouth comes up a lot. So I've heard that song quite recently. And boy, I think all my memories are now... That, that raises a question. Can your memories be ruined by having the same song in a different scenario? Can you dip, can you correlate the song to a different beat, or is one so deeply rooted because of different senses, or an early? It's because it's so much earlier that that's your primary one. What was your opinion on that, Nick? It probably depends on the memory of what's more impactful. Like if you have, like say, All Star, for example. Say when I think of it. I think of Shrek, and then I get in, a, and then I'm driving Donkey. down, and then I'm driving down the road, and I get in a car accident. And listen to it, probably gonna have bad memories of it. You're gonna have I'm a probably bad not time. gonna be probably not gonna be thinking get out of my swamp. Gonna be thinking <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. That hurts. So I think it probably depends on the situation, but I think it can definitely be overridden. Yes, but I imagine how hard it is to overwrite a memory or a association with the sound i imagine that's got to be quite hard to do because humans are creatures of habits and like if we eat one thing that's bad people won't go back to, like if you go to a restaurant and you have a bad experience people don't go back to it even though you might have had 10 good experiences beforehand is that one bad experience ruin everything or do you remember the first time experience and you just go oh that's an off experience it's probably like most things like even for the restaurant like if it's a restaurant that I go to all the time and it just so happened to be bad one time and I, I like the people there. I'm like, eh, it happens. Everyone has their days. But if I go there, you know, if I've been there once before and I go back and it's shitty, I'm like, yeah, I'm probably just not going to go there again. That's, that's fair. I guess uh, repetitions change the scenario on how many times you've been there or not been there. But you brought up the fact of music helps us, especially with Alzheimer's, but it doesn't just stop with Alzheimer's. It helps with insomnia, helps with even cancer. It's been shown to help with depression, reduce anxiety. Uh, interesting study I came across in 2000 study. It, I'm sorry. An interesting study that I came across in 2007 was in Budapest. It was a study calculated where people with insomnia listened to classical music at bedtime. Again, going back to classical music, had an 80% increase in sleep and better sleepers within three weeks. That's a huge demographic. Three weeks, 80% improvement. Uh, 80% of the, the sample group improved. That's a short turnaround and a large percentage. So it seems like we need to implement more classical music. So, Nick, you might be becoming a nerd soon. Well, and that's one of those things as a human, right? I know the right thing to do. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. <laughs> Does Star Wars music count as classical music now? Oh, then I've been listening to classical music a lot. There we go. See, you just play that. Well, that might make you really like pumped and ready to go listening to, to the Jedi Return music. Yeah. Or, I'm. oh, that's another good one. I think every, like the Imperial March, every kid knows that even if they've only seen Star Wars once, it's just, it's imprinted in everyone's mind. Now, is that imprinted in everyone's mind because of the tune or because of the the scene of Vader walking past everyone. I wouldn't even say scene. I would say, because there's some people who know that music and have never seen the scene because it's used in TikTok, Instagram, whatever the kids that you're using today, because it's implemented into our society. I think it's a societal-based music. Uh, I imagine if people make references to his song, even though they never listen to the song, they'll still associate it with X amount scenario. So I imagine... I imagine society has a big part to play with popular music, so to speak. Now, granted, we can make the argument that music is scientifically can be adjusted to humans to match our heartbeat, which is a huge thing for exercise, which we might get into later. Brainwaves, like with classical music, like we said. So maybe the societal one is its own beat in its way. It's trying to fit in with the herd, you listen to a certain rhythm, a certain beat. Yeah, well, I think... Like uh, bringing it back to the plants, like I was talking about, Fuck. the different vibrations. I think it's kind of the same with humans that at the end of the day, 
what we're looking for is is a certain set of vibrations and maybe the song's not that good or whatever but the beat's good i mean you've listened to a lot like a lot of modern pop music i'm sure I do. the song sucks but oh, the yeah. beat is really good that melody and so you you need that especially for like when you're exercising or something like it's awesome and so yeah i think it's uh Okay, sorry, my, I'm kind of thinking right now. So no, I was thinking about. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I. This is kind of just to buy you some time, but I learned the other day why music gets sucks in our head, and it's something so simple and so dumb, and it's the easiest way to get a song out of your head. You just play it. You can't no, remember it. It's you. The song that sticks in your head is a song that you can't define the ending. You don't know how it ends. So you keep recycling it, trying to figure out on your brain how it ends. So if you go to this song and you go to like the last 15 seconds and you figure out how it ends, you forget the song. It's all about trying to remember how it ends. That's why it gets stuck in our head, which is quite, I mean, quite useful when I was younger when songs get stuck in my head a lot more. But it's something so simple and so easy. Yeah, I have heard if you have a song stuck in your head and you play it, you'll forget about it. But... It turns out you might just need to play the last 15 seconds. So what I was thinking is I was talking about the beat and the melody. Um, Please and, don't stop the music, music. Yeah, we'll, uh, you guys can pay us to not have Mike ever sing again. Um, but I was thinking, okay, so I listen to predominantly like country music, which is a lot more lyric based. Like it's telling a story, which is... And the not that the the beat or whatever is isn't good, but I I didn't look into this at all. I don't know if you did. The difference between when you're listening and paying attention to the lyrics, or just like listening, zoning out to the beat, the effect that has on people. Because like classical music, it's only lyrics. Classical but, music is mainly instrumental. That's okay. I completely. That's what I meant. I said it wrong. Said it completely backwards. We're gonna scrub that. But, um, yeah, like, with if you're listening to, like, a nice, not like a newer country, which is predominantly beat, I would say. I would say pop. That's not country. Yeah. But, like, an actual, like, storytelling. I'm talking, like. Hank Williams Jr. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Something like that where there's a story that's told. Even, even like, some. Cotton Road. Some K-Raj. Um. But yeah, it's a, uh, and then you're, you're, I imagine that's probably activating a different part of your brain. Yes and no. I imagine you can tell a whole story without making human words. So I would be, I agree with you that there's definitely an effect on solely voice. Because I mean, there are people who can sing who don't need instruments for music. And I'm wondering, and there's music that you don't need lyrics to listen to. And I imagine all tell a story, but I think you're right on something, Nick, where the story is different depending on how you're listening to it. So if it's mainly lyrical based, I'm not excluding, I I am excluding melodies because I think melodies are just kind of rhythmic. They don't tell the story. It's the same thing over and over again, but like one that continually flows through, I imagine affects your brain differently than one that just repeats itself and also differently one that's not lyrical based that is doesn't repeat itself those are got to be three different avenues that might lead the same path or paths that i I honestly don't know i didn't research this but it's i I like that mindset nick yeah so it turns out neither of us research this so (laughs) we can't really define it so let's uh let's move on like i said my mine was mostly in memory and just the different ways like you said, um, I also ran into a lot of studies about people who had Alzheimer's who played music and helped bring their memory back, which is something that my family needs to start doing because we have terrible memory, me included. So that's I'm going to jot that down for myself. But, uh, yeah, what? so that was – I'm kind of curious, just shooting here, what is your most – like? musical related memory like a certain song plays a certain vivid memory do you also have like it brings back everything so i said it on one podcast my favorite music but 
uh, a cold garage where a space kicker, a space heater where I had to kick every five minutes to keep on, a crappy speaker that would beep every minute playing the same song on repeat. So when I'm trying to learn a new skill or uh, a new talent, I put the same song on repeat and I do it over and over rep again. So if I ever forget, I put the song on and it comes back second like nature. Yeah, Smash Mouth, uh, All Star. <laughs> not sure what you're uh, working out to, Nick, but m- maybe help you out there. But I'm all over the board with music. I wouldn't say I have any one specific music genre that I listen to, but I live with my headphones in, so I always associate music in with uh, with my memories, with my background. Because honestly, if I could have theme music my entire life i would take that i i'd actually pay a million dollars it wouldn't be a million dollars but it would be hey if i could have music whatever i'm doing and just plays i'm in because i i live for i live for music so besides the garage ones i mentioned another podcast we should go check out i would have to say car rides car rides and music are deeply synced into me of just having highway to hell play as you've got the wide open highway and you just put the, the pedal to the floor. It's, I absolutely, like certain songs just make me want to race, run, and go. And a lot of those memories are in the cars because, well, get that wind blowing through your hair, the sun's shining, and the right song comes on, you're going 100 easy. What about you, Nick? Do you have any associations with memories and songs that come to mind? So besides the one I mentioned, um, yeah, I've, uh, like I said, we had like a playlist. This Back when I fought fire, we didn't have uh, like Spotify and like thousands of songs. So we had like a USB stick kind of deal and we had like 15 songs on it and they were like the worst songs ever. So we had some Froggy Fresh in there. We had not, they weren't all bad. We had uh, like Cocaine by Eric Clapton. We had <laughs> we had some Skinnerd. We had some Lil Dicky just like the most fucked up playlist but every time i hear any song by those people i think kind of of that but yeah i mean is it bad that sometimes the song that doesn't fit the situation is the best song for it like that's the one you remember the most because like it could be i think i think you told the story with wildfire podcast where you were just having um just driving through and you said it's a song I don't want to set the world on. Just like either ironic songs or just like, I'm so happy. Like just like random songs that shouldn't be in that scenario, but they just work. Oh yeah, that's easily my favorite. I love that. Like I love playing like those ironic songs in that situation. Like I don't want to set the world on fire or something like that. And I love, uh, I love the way... And this is why I'm sure they used to play music like before they go to war. I love the way music makes you feel like there's nothing better than driving to a fire like or going to do some burning or something like you're about to go do some badass shit with your guys and you're blaring some rock or you're blaring some like whatever, like just getting pumped up, dude. And it's like the music, like I can't imagine doing it without the music, you know, playing some like you said, Highway to Hell, something like that, like ACDC just getting pumped up. It's amazing how, one, with exercise and war. War is a very interesting one. So I don't remember the exact study. I didn't. This one is from just my own research years back. But the efficiency of marching for a military highly increased with drums because everyone gets in sync, everyone gets in rhythm. And that probably goes to exercise, because I don't know about you, Nick, but exercising, some people can are able to listen to pop when they exercise, listen to country when they exercise. Me, I need to listen to music like I'm going to war. I need that mindset to get into. And I imagine that's just my rhythmic sync when I'm working out is do or die. And I imagine other people's sync is run, run fast, because a lot of people, I mean, kill or be killed situation some people fight or flight some people need that high beat kind of happy music to go run farther go faster some people need that well five finger punch of death and go go crazy on the racks so that's exercise is deeply tied into music and i don't know if you want to hop into that um yeah let's why not so like i mentioned earlier where it sinks into your body depending on your exercise and what music you listen to does the exact same thing 
if you're listening to slow beats, it's e- it's easier to do consistent slow cardio. So like a rowing machine, if you're listening to well, like Viking war drums, there's a reason why they have that doom 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 beat is because it syncs up with your body and you're able to keep that consistently going longer with running having your finding a song that naturally matches your 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 cardiovascular system and your lungs intake and it is very important so as your lungs get better you need to change your song so it matches up to what you're running to that's a huge influence on increasing your running skills which i thought was surprising you can't listen to the same song you were listening when you were starting off as a runner as you are when you've been running for years it you'll simply not grow and listening to high beat fast music for heavy complex moves tends to lead to more injuries because you're jerking you're trying to match the rhythm humans naturally want to dance want to move well I don't know about you, Nick. I like to dance, even though I shouldn't dance, but we want to move our body. So when we're doing exercise and we hear the music, we do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you know what they say if they don't dance, and they're not any friends of mine. They can dance if they want to. And I'm curious, what did you come across with exercise and working out? Kind of the same thing that, you know, playing a certain kind of music will make people's exercise more intense, help them work out stuff that I probably didn't need to read like an article on. Like I probably could have just asked pretty much any single person who's ever worked out, but yeah, it's maybe we don't now why the reason is, but yeah, I think most people like my wife, she, she'll listen to whatever to work out that she doesn't normally listen to. And I think that's pretty common. And everyone has that one song where when they're working out and it comes on, you you go harder. It's go time, baby. And it it doesn't just stop with exercise. Like we mentioned with uh, Alzheimer's, it also goes into reducing uh, anxiety, fight depression, and boost your immune system. So over 400 music studies were put together to find out that, well, music has the ability to reduce all of those. That's no surprise, but... The type of music also affects and them. stress reduces stress as well. Oh yeah, abs- absolutely. Like listen to a, you have a bad day and you just play one of your songs that you just is your go to. You instantly get better, but which is kind of obvious, but it's nice to have scientific basis on. Sad songs affect women far more than they do affect men, and I'm curious on the range of that scope. So does music? in general affect women more than men are women are more able to emotionally tune or tune their frequency of their body to the music more than men because i would say this might be a broad stroke statement but women want to at least in american culture dance more than men do at least this that's the stereotype so i'm wondering if they're able to sync up their frequency in their body more to the music than men can i mean they're probably better at it than men I mean, that's probably without saying. Yeah, I don't know. I never really thought about it like that. But I I mean, that probably makes sense. I mean, music is directly tied into your emotions and into different parts of your brain. And women have a far more superior ability to read facial expressions for emotions, able to have a larger range of emotions than men. So to me, it makes sense like music categories can easily impact them or they're able to sink into more now it makes begs the question of how does music categories affect the sexes differently so will heavy metal have a higher chance of sinking into male bodies than it was to female bodies because we've all seen music where it's a demographic of one specific sex is it that on purpose or is that genetically based? Is that DNA based? Is that societal based? How does the sinkage of your body to music form? I'm going to call the time out there. Sync. One, two, three. So I think there's definitely something to certain genres, certain types of music towards certain sexes, male or female. 
like you said, there's there are women who listen to hardcore metal. But let's be honest, it's mostly dudes. And, you know, there's men who listen to Taylor Swift. You know who you are, Tyler. But not that many. Well, it's really interesting to me. Like, I I assume you're not into the world of EDM. Like, like I've been to some EDM concerts. EDM tends to be, I would say, uh, what's the body category? You have endomorph, echomorph, and mesomorph. I would say most of those people who go to EDM concerts are mesomorph bodies. So people who are naturally more fit, you know, the six packs, the Spartan looking people. I would say that's, if you go to EM concerts, there are a lot of hot people on both sexes. And I imagine that body style, that form, that figure, that genetics maybe has a huge influence on what type of music they like and are gravitated to because EDM tends to be high intensity beats. And well, mesomorphs in history and in modern day society tend to be more athletic and more sports based, which are, you know, high intense moments. So similar to like a Toby Keith concert. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking of like a Colt 45, con- uh, a Colt Ford concert and a bunch of fat people in Daisy Dukes, which should not be wearing Daisy Dukes came to my mind for some reason. Yeah, no, there's probably something to that. And uh, definitely like, yeah, I'm still kind of thinking about it's of why, I mean, obviously we know why women listen to Taylor Swift, but why do a lot more men listen to heavy metal than, than women? It might be that archaic caveman brain of war. It might be that war drum kind of beat that that deep impact because um i know women tend to be less affected by heavy deep voices like especially with like mothering child compared to men men we hear another deep voice we're like oh a threat another male that's our mindset so maybe that mindset gets us ready for war yeah, we're coming for you morgan freeman <laughs> <laughs> no we will protect morgan freeman at all costs but you still haven't answered my question is the choice of your music. I imagine that has to deal some with your genetics and DNA and upbringing, but how much is it societally based? Because if your friend group's all listening to this music and you decided to start listening to it to help fit in, does that change who you are personality wise simply because of the music you are, or are you gravitated more towards what your DNA already has in it? I'm going to have to go both on this one. I'm going to take the easy way out. Um, so I, growing up, my parents listened to Garth Brooks, and I think that's where my love of country music came from. But then with YouTube, I found out that there's actually, like, there's a lot more music than it's on the radio. And so then I started listening to more like, and I, I hate to be that guy. I get it. I know I'm being that guy right now like obscure people and then that not a lot of my friends listen to. And then it's kind of like uh, you talk about in fashion. Then I went to college and these other guys who I met listened to those same people who are still like small, like not well known. And it's like, okay, instant friends. And we all, like you said, kind of like we all kind of found each other. Like somehow it's still the same. So it, they're in the same field, doing the same kind of thing. So it leads to me the fact that there's something inside of us that we're all kind of the same. And I don't know whether it's genetics or society pushed us like, okay, you like this kind of work. You like this kind of music. I could still see it going either way after talking through that whole thing. I didn't really get any closer to an answer. Humans always look for their tribe, but the way music develops us... There, there's no argument that music develops us, but how it develops us, I think, is up for debate. Is it develops based on societal of, hey, this song's always playing on the radio. It produces more dumb people because it's a dumb song. Or is it our DNA that makes us want to find certain frequencies, certain beats, and that just happens to go down our pathway? I think that is, uh, that would be a really fun inter- in, uh and study which i think should be international because different music different cultures different 
frequencies, different beats. I imagine you could do this whole thing without even music, just hertz, just different sound waves. Because, I mean, we talked about it earlier in the podcast with sounds we can't even hear affects us. So maybe sounds that are just one tone beats heavily affect us. And Nick, I hate to do this because with one tone and unfortunately it's going to go to trees. And, well, I'll bring it back to space. Don't worry about it. But nature sounds, they have a huge impact on how we interact with ourselves and others. I don't know if you came across this in your research. No, I I really, I didn't research it all. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I know people listen to whale sounds and trickling stream and whatever, you know, if you are trying to go to sleep or something. And it's, I think it has like a calming effect, if I had to guess. So ambient sounds, white noise, nature, storms, basic sounds that are naturally produced in nature tend to be more calming for us. And I would completely say that's in our DNA because we're just so accustomed to it. We hear storm, so we know that, well, we're in our cave. Creatures are, don't usually come out during lightning, thundering storms, and rain because they don't want to. It's cold. It's miserable. We're a little bit safer. Or you hear wind blow against the leaves. You know that your crops are going to do fine. It's that basic human evolution that we grew up with in nature. And it, it does play a re calming, relaxing sound with us, which I thought was interesting, which I didn't research, but I want to see someone research is waves. Because waves is a dual-edged sword. It could be calming beach, you know. You got a nice cold margarita in your hand laying in the sun. Or it could be waves crashing and you're worried that your ship's going to crash. I feel like that could be go both ways. So waves, like I live kind of on the coast, so I go fishing on the ocean all the time. And so I personally love the sound of waves. And... But like you're right, it is it is somewhat frightening just because you know you have like rogue waves and stuff and they can be dangerous. And so you do have that kind of mix of when you're out on the beach fishing, it's not uh it's not like you're calm like Florida waves gently lapping at the coast kind of thing. It's sometimes a little bit more than that. So you're simultaneously relaxed, but also making sure you're not about to get swept out to sea by a rogue wave or something nick you're telling me you don't want to be in the cold north pacific swept out just by yourself treading water for days that's a negative ghost rider <laughs> well i have another question for you and this might be skipping a little bit ahead but we talked about nature a little bit with music i kind of want to talk about animals and music yeah, that's something we kind of touched on at the beginning that everyone knows um, like whale songs, the frequencies whales have songs distinctive. Each it's a pod of whales, a tribe of whale, pod, a pod of whales, each of them have their own distinctive music. And, and a, accent. And accent. And I think dolphins also have something similar. And like you said, songbirds. So yeah, that's uh, I've, I never really thought, I mean, I guess I kind of knew because I knew that whales had songs, but I never really thought about the fact that music isn't just a human thing because as a human, we assume that we are the best, which we are, obviously, but you never think about other peop other species having music. Yeah, that's, it's amazing how that affects us. Well, the reason why being on accent is because we can tell by the whales and dolphins sound what part and what pod they're in. So that means their songs are different, which means they have a different tone, which means they probably affect their quote unquote tribe differently. And even if you go with something basic where it's not even a song, but it's just a sound like a, like a lion chuff, that low heavy frequency that travels for miles affects people. I mean, I'm not quite sure if that's DNA based of like, hey, it's a, that's a lion noise. Lions have fucked up my ancestors. Let's stay away from it. Or maybe it's a more DNA base of hearing that low frequency is enough to say this is something dangerous, which 
this is kind of off topic before I go back to nature's, but I'm wondering if there's a universal song that all animals and creatures knows because we all kind of stem from one single celled organism. So there's gotta be some frequency or noise that we all can relate to. No, I'm, I feel like there definitely is. If you say smash mouth, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that, but uh, yeah, for sure. Um, but no, there's probably some kind of frequency or note that we will all panic at. And it's probably from like, I don't know, some, some asshole T-Rex or something that we all, <laughs> all ran from some, some, and en- some enemy or something like that, that we all just kind of evolved. When you hear this, like run, maybe that's how we find the brown note. Who knows? You, all right, before we get into your brown note, I want to stick with nature. God damn it. And no, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to play the brown note during this audio, even though I am very tempted to. S- song in nature is not just human based. So I don't know if you saw this with uh, chimpanzees and magic. So monkeys and, well, not monkeys, chimpanzees are influenced and react to, ma- uh, to magic. They also react to music. I believe it was a zoo in Europe where they used classical or it was a jazz music to help rescue a person who fell into a gorilla exhibit. Just so like the gorilla, you know, wouldn't fucking jack that person up. And music is it, it's a basic human nature, but it's basic nature in our everyone's code. I'm wondering though how song. I I I'm just asking a basic question. I I don't expect you to know the answer, but songbirds. How do birds develop music? Like some bird had to be the first to go. If I make these sounds, I'll get these mates. How do you come up with that? Do you just start playing around and come up with it? How how is that in the evolutionary chain? The ability to create music important and to multiple species. So if I had to guess, it would be, it wasn't the ability to create music. So say that songbird, whoever, it, that's that bird at one point in the species lineage had the traits necessary for survival, but also happened to make a certain like tone or something. Other birds would mimic that tone and then it became more focused on like the tone so I think it started out with tone associated with a trait and then became more tonal. So if a person's sick, their voice kind of gets gravelly, but if it doesn't sound gravelly, it sounds healthier. Right. Bring so, out your dead. <laughs> so it's the same thing with the birds, but every species doing, well, not every species, but a large portion of the species doing that is very interesting. This is another random question, but do fish also have mating calls or is it just pheromones because i know i mean if dolphins make noises that's mammals in water there's got to be some other besides whales and dolphins like octopuses do they make noise in the water maybe not auditory tones but like sounds that can feel the body there's got to be i mean what there's a sonic fish that can make a uh, uh, not sonic fish a sonic lobster or crab that can pinch its uh, claws so close that it creates a sonic boom and that's how it stunts its prey. So they have to, they're have they able to make sounds. So maybe the louder the boom, the bigger the claw is so it attracts more mates. I, I'm just throwing out ideas here. Yeah, from what I know, fish spawn, it's not really anything related to sound. It's more of a time of season location deal. Fish was the wrong terminology. Maybe just ocean life in general. Because you got crustaceans, you got octopi, you got mammals. And sound travels farther in water, doesn't it? I believe so, yes. So well, that's a more efficient means of communication than pheromones. So is begs the question, are there more aquatic life that can produce sounds to track mates? Because I don't really know besides dolphins and whales off the top of my head. Probably. Um, yeah, I just, uh, don't know that much. What, what else? Well, there's, I mean, like you got I'm trying to think, how does shrimp reproduce? This is a dumb, this is a dumber question to your dumber question. I, you're asking the wrong dumb person. Cause my mind came to what about land and sea animals like frogs? They crack for 
mates and what about turtles and or it doesn't even just start with mates because some species make music to track mates some species make sounds to warn other people i would say sounds just in general like a like a cry for help is a song i would make that argument in nature so like if a land animals crying on land do water species get affected we're getting a little bit off topic we should we should hone it in back to music yeah so this is a pretty pretty far off topic yeah but um no definitely it's just weird to me to think that music is not in fact like a human only thing which it seems so very human music dance when in fact it's like pretty much all around the animal kingdom Nick, what if I would tell you it went beyond the animal kingdom? What if I told you into my favorite place, space? Fuck off. There are cosmic sounds slash music that is playing the entire universe. There are pulsar stars that send off certain frequencies that are mixing in with gases of exoplanets and, and galaxies crashing together that create sounds and music of, of the universe. And since there's no friction in space, that sound goes universally in all directions with pretty much out friction. Granted, it's on a core quantum level because there's no air to transfer the sound, so it's the quantum level transferring the sound, but there is a universal sound that we can't auditory hear, but it's sound and music playing throughout the entire universe. Makes complete sense. Kind of, okay, so there's a lot that you just said that I could go a lot of different ways. But my question is, how do you define music? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's not music. I'm just saying there's things, like, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder, like all art. But how do we, like, if you had to put your finger on it, it, gun to your head, two sentences, define music. What's the definition? A rhythmic beat made up of one of more than one frequency. So you at least need two tones with a rhythmic beat or pattern. I would classify as the very bottom of the barrel music. Purpose? Do you think it has to be purposefully created or no? Yes. I would say certain t- certain metals frequent at a certain tone, but that's not purposeful, but if they get formed by nature to form that tone, I would say that's purposeful. It's that's a debatable question. I would say I mean there's no right answer to this question. I would say songs have to be purposeful. Music can be uh, can be not purposeful. What about you, Nick? What's your opinion on all this? Yeah, I don't have one. That's why I was asking you. Um, you can piggyback on my definition. I no, think because I was right. just thinking. Okay, like there's certain sounds that are very pleasant to people. To me, I, like I love like um, if I'm out planting or I'm out working in the woods and I hear the sound of a chainsaw in the distance, it reminds me of when I used to work in the logging crew. And brings back good memories. And it is a sense, music to my ears. It's not music. It's literally just a two-stroke engine. And falling trees. Well, that kind of fits in my definition. Two tones with a rhythmic beat. At least two tones with a rhythmic beat. Because you have the tree falling and the chainsaw. And then you could also have that in the cut. And there's a pattern to it. You know, how many cc's the engine has. And the rate the tree falls. I... Maybe just hum- maybe music is just patterns that form. I mean, humans are just looking for patterns into a system because us humans, we do love our patterns. We do love our patterns, yeah. No, I, I think there's definitely something to that. What's a, what's a non-musical sound that brings you joy? When you have like a screw or a nut, when you have a screw or a nut that you drop on a bunch of metal and it kind of pings down that is really satisfying but it's also at the same time an, oh shit i gotta get the bolt kind of feeling but 
I just picture like unscrewing something at the top of your engine bay and just hearing that bolt go ding, 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 ding all the way down. And then you look beneath and there's no bolt there and fuck, it's somewhere in there where to go. Yeah, but that sound going down is very satisfying. <laughs> yeah, but if it doesn't hit the concrete at the end, it's it's not satisfying. It's it's that note at the end that really make or break. <laughs> You're not wrong, but that's something not musical, but I still find really satisfying. Or this is more of a sound than music. I would say leaves just blowing in the wind. It's very calming, relaxing. I would say wind. I mean, maybe that's why the first humans uh, developed instruments that were wind-based is because we're trying to mimic nature with the wind, with the currents. Because, I mean, wind's a powerful force, especially if you're out exposed to nature. Wind can kill you. So maybe we're just trying to mimic... Because we can blow air out of our mouths, and we know the wind can blow us, so maybe we're just trying to mimic that. Don't you fuck. Yeah, no... Uh... That's honestly probably one of the smartest things you've said. Um, but yeah, no. Love you too, buddy. Wind is super powerful. Like I live on the coast, we get a lot of wind, and it it creates a lot of different sounds. Like you said, the wind blowing leaves, wind blowing trees, even the swaying of the trees in the woods. When you get all this wind that comes in. You can hear the creak. It sounds like an old house, the wood actually turning, and trees will get wood, um, they'll get wind stress and can actually like crack in a sense. And so you can hear all that. It just sounds like bending wood, but when it gets up into like the 30 mile an hour range, range, it's you start hearing it almost sounds like waves breaking. The wind is so powerful when it comes in and hits an object, whether it be trees or the soil the ground something it's just like an actual like fucking waves breaking and I, I at first i thought it was the ocean i was working out in like 30 mile an hour winds and i was only like an air mile from the actual coast and i was like man it must be like the ocean must be really rough i can hear it and i was like that's probably just the wind i yeah, wind is a heavily influence into our lives. And this kind of ties it back with humans and nature. But even deaf people can feel the beat, can feel the music. Deaf people can even be influenced by the sounds and music of the world and the universe. The frequency and matching isn't just on an auditorial level, but on a physical level. So... Loud house club music, you know, that mm-ts, mm-ts, mm-ts. you can feel that because of the bass are going through our bodies. You can feel that auditory wave hit our chest and impact our heart and breathing. And that's the same way with deaf people. It's, it affects them the exact same way it does if you have perfect hearing. Now, granted, I don't know if the music changes, but it's the same effects the same you know helps with anxiety depression insomnia stress all those factors working out all those factors play the same just by the feeling and beats so that's impressive to me that it's not just a auditorial sense but it's a physical sense where we don't have to play a rhythmic beat in our ears but perhaps in the future we'll have a exercise equipment where we attach to our chest and we can match our heart and cardio rate to what we're running to. We can just feel it. And maybe that's even more influential and better for our cardiovascular system. Yeah. I feel like we're probably not even years away from that. I feel like we're months away from that. Like something like, a with like, a all the watches that hook up to your heart rate, you'll probably easily, someone's going to make an app. You can sync that to your Spotify and it's just going to populate with, whatever song you need to get you in the zone. I am curious though on, I didn't research this all. It just popped in my head because what you said with the, the watches on your wrist, but if electrical currents and music could, because you can make electrical current into music and vice versa. So I'm wondering if sending electrical current into your nervous system, because there's a nervous system and neurons that run on electricity, would that change how you 
impact or maybe there's different ways maybe there's different ways to impact all right this is two part statement maybe there's different ways to listen to music that we've yet to explore maybe just going through the electrical system of our nervous system we can feel music in ways we've never felt before maybe that frequency of that chill going down our spine because we're matching up the frequency maybe we can hack that and go straight into our nervous system but also we could use the electrical frequency of our body and implement a machine that goes like on a wrist like a watch playing music going into our body to get a second boost or athletes getting that second rush or better recovery. I don't know if I have any recovery with science with music, but I imagine that's got to play an impact of muscles relaxing, relaxation, recover, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I was thinking about, like you said, playing music without an auditory auditory experience, like getting it pumped directly into your nervous system. I was like, <laughs> we'll finally be done with AirPods. Like there'll be a douchier way to listen to music. Like, isn't that awesome? Yeah. So you got that, but yeah, that, that, but that brings it back to the point of that music is, it's almost like lyrics is, is in the way and it's more in the beat and it's how our body responds to certain stimuli that that's what we're after with music. Well, now I'm wondering if we can hack that so music can be used to control a crowd djs do it all the time that's how they make their business they use you know certain frequencies to raise it up to get people dancing more doing more it's feeling the crowd and feeling the movement and controlling them with frequencies i wonder if we can once we you know get things like Neuralink, where we're controlling human brains or trying to track mates like birds do if we play a subsonic sound that no one can hear but we play around mates could you track more mates because i mean there's a whole these douchebaggery things of like don't shower if they're you know blah 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 but if we can use sound to control situations so so he, here's an example i'm thinking of um so at like a like a car accident like a bad car accident the fire truck obviously plays certain tones on a, the way there to get people to move out of the way once you arrive on scene there's speakers in there that calm everyone down keep the bystanders calm, keep the victims calm, just just certain tones that everyone re helps defuse the situation. Well, not even defuse. Imagine if you have a victim with a cut artery and he's bleeding out and their heart rate's panicking more, so they're producing more blood, which gets, raises their blood pressure, which shoots out more blood, but you play calming music and help slow that heart rate. They bleed less. They bleed slower. So maybe in the back of ambulances, we have calming music playing. Or if we have riots, instead of you know, blasting with tear gas, we play What a Beautiful World. You know, maybe Kunamatata. Smash Mouth. All right. We're, all right. We can do Smash Mouth. That, that, that. That's not what you want. That's not what you want at all. The, the new UN theme song shall be Smash Mouth. That is my decree. Second that. I second that motion. All right. And, and motion has been carried. Now, it is amazing. All right, so you brought up the conversation, and now I want to keep going with it. Where would you implement music? Because we know the psychology of music. Where would you implement it immediately? Besides ambulances and crowds and control and stuff like that. And besides schools, which we already touched on. Yeah, we, we, we touched on schools with classical music. We touched on ambulance with uh, uh, calming music and restaurants with calming music. Where else would you put it? Uh, Congress. That would now. What kind of music would you, would you play? Hyper music, calming music. No, no, those people need to be chilled the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> Part of me wants to play like heavy metal just to get them going, moving faster, or you know, be less lazy or something. I would love to play heavy metal at the DMV. You can't. That would always be... get what you want. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, well, that, that's like my worst nightmare. Sitting there, like heavy metal flow and you're getting pumped up and just waiting like just fucking sitting there for days that's how deaths happen that is how people die yeah that's a music can be used as a torturous device i guess and but if i had to put a place where i wanted music to go to that i think would impact people's lives the grocery store i f hate the grocery store with large crowds people don't understand the right lane is for people walking the right way left people are for walking that way just choose a lane 
pick it. Maybe maybe some Ward Viking drums and you know in the grocery store so everyone just kids in the right lane. Something simple. Just something everyone does. Yeah, that's and that's the thing too, like what it I mean, don't get me wrong, I very often listen to rock while I'm driving, but what if you could only listen to soothing music while you're driving? Do you think we'd have less asshole drivers on the road? I do, but you also made me the real you came to the conclusion in my head of when does music become a a negative impact on a situation? Now granted we said classical music's great for studying and listening, but is it too loud or too long have a negative negative impact? Is there a Goldilocks zone where you're supposed to listen to? Yeah, so I can answer this pretty easily. When you're working on like your pickup or something and it's not going how you want and you have aggressive music playing you get very upset very quickly and that is not you need to stop stop slow down figure out what the fuck happened because i've been there i think we've all been there and but no it does it does have the question of when does so you're in a high stress environment you're on the international space station bringing back to space because you fuck trees uh you're on the international space station there's a crisis you play classical music or some type of music to help with critical thinking or at least calm them down or relax them or something. When does having music become negative? When does not having ambient sound or having no sound be more beneficial than having music? Um, well, if you ask my wife pretty much any time. Does, <laughs> does she not like listening to music? No, she does. But if I'm like doing something and talking to her like anything else it's like too much for her blast me too much auditory inputs and it, then she gets upset at me she's just thinking to the music not your words that's uh, maybe going yeah back. i could have told you she's not listening to me dude <laughs> <laughs> no but nick i think we bit off a lot with music there's quite a bit of categories we can go down to and we touch nothing but broad strokes and Nick, I'm curious. Do you have anything you want to bring to the table? I did want to say, I just talk about the emotion that music can produce. Like, how, like, like I said, big country music fan, pretty much known for sad songs. You know, what do you play if you get country song backwards? You get your house back, dog back, wife back, all that My shit. Achy breaky heart. <laughs> Um, the Corb Lunn has a song called, uh, it's like something like double S ranch or something talks about losing the farm, having to sell it off. And it's like one of the saddest songs and it's not even like, and like, yeah, it's just such like an emotional song as like, man, like it is wild that you can listen to, like, you don't even have to listen to the whole thing. Like the first, like minute of it and go from up here like having a good day to like oh shit that fucking sucks like just i know we touched on it but i just want to reiterate like just the emotional effect that music can have on you is is pretty wild this is why i think music's more dna based than societal based because certain tones are free i mean sad songs i'm like what they're d minors and stuff like that i don't know music but they all have a common theme and they and they that frequency that note that not the brown note nick but that note brings us down so maybe that frequency affects our dna somehow or maybe we're built to hear that maybe that that sound occurs in nature somewhere that we associate with evil or terrible things yeah it could be like the old like not neanderthal but old homo sapien version of taps right like you hear that and you know death like something bad automatically associated with something bad like everyone hears the jaws music and they're immediately like where's the shark and and maybe it's the same thing like maybe hearing a tone of a like a like a deep g all of a sudden reminds us of like a tiger growl or a lion growl or maybe it hears us of one of our kin in our tribe dying of like some disease maybe that tone that they produce we associate with and that's what we produce with sad music and we carry that on with us by producing it to perhaps memory wise or maybe that's just a memory a way 
evolution has made us to carry on remembering those tones, that those tones are there for a reason. Those tones might be bad. Those tones might be good. But this is way off topic. I've not researched. So again, we might dress the music again in the future of music that is mixed. So you have country and rap songs. You have songs that have a happy beat, but sad lyrics. I'm quite curious on how that affects psychology, on how that plays into the mind of having bad lyrics and good sound or vice versa on how that affects us because those are two different messages two different tones two different frequencies all trying to sync in with one body yeah okay so real quick the song i was talking about is s lazy h by core blend um it's probably gonna fuck you up <laughs> right because you're you're getting the i'm trying to think i feel like i know an example on the tip of my tongue but i can't think of it because you're getting simultaneously the both you know you're you're trying to be like happy but your body's telling you to be sad it's got to kind of mess you up but like i know i'm trying to think of a song like well i'm wondering okay if, here's what about um what's that song like the foster the people pump the kicks yeah like it's like everyone really likes the the music the beat is awesome everyone loves it but it's it's about a school shooting so it's kind of like damn if you do damn if you don't yeah right well i'm wondering it was like a number one i think it probably still is uh i don't know if the human body only can process one tone at a time and i also don't know what organs can process what body so maybe our nervous system can process tones and our brain can toss uh, process tones so maybe we can process multiple tones but different parts of our body i i don't know this these are just questions from the top of my head because Nick, we kind of bit off more than we could chew with music. I thought this was going to be an easy one, and boy, was I wrong. Yeah, we keep thinking, like, oh, yeah, we'll do, like, something kind of easy, take a break, and then it's like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> we keep digging our own graves and shooting ourselves in the foot, but I have so many questions, so little answers, and Nick, I'm, I'm curious do you have any more questions about music or are you just gonna i have more questions but i think we're at the end of this podcast i i feel like that and god i my brain hurts on the science psychology and influence music has because boy does that have a huge factor on society and individual and evolutionary basis and nick i'd be curious to hear other people's opinions and voices and what they think about music or how it's influenced them and where could they tell us where to find us you can find us on youtube you can find us on instagram send us a message comment whatever you cannot find us on twitter why not because no music's made on twitter because <laughs> twitter is a dumpster twitter player. is the social media equivalent of playing heavy metal at the dmv that that's hell that is hell and out of curiosity what books are you reading I'm still reading Wayfinding, the science and technology of how humans find their way in the world. What about you? I'm still reading Fountainhead by Anna Reed. Uh, it's quite a long book, and I imagine I'll be stuck on that for quite a long time, but I enjoy her philosophy, and I was a big fan of her earlier, and well, pretty much all her novels. She didn't write that many. So, yeah, I'm going to keep reading that. Awesome. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to the Backyard Philosophy Podcast. We rarely finish a podcast without missing a point we wanted to bring up, so let us know what we forgot. And if you have a topic you want us to talk about, let us know at Backyard Philosophy on Instagram and Backyard Philosophy Podcast on Facebook.